if there's any question, maybe you want to ask me intimate question about Islam or, or, or you know, what, what is happening. Because if you mention about Jesus saved you and, uh, you know, he died for you, so to speak, right? I mean, he died for you, right? Jesus died for you, you know, so your, your son is, is, is taken away from you because Jesus died for you. In other words, there's a guarantee for you that you're going to be get, uh, getting salvation. But uh, at the same time, we read in the book of uh, Matthew 19, uh, 16, uh, somebody came to Jesus Christ and said, Good master, what good thing must I do to enter heaven? That this person wants to go to heaven. He saw Jesus Christ on the way. He said, Good master, what good thing must I do to enter heaven eternally? Jesus got angry. Why does thou call me good for? Why do you have to give me all this lofty name? Why does thou have, uh, call me good for? The only one that is good is the one in heaven. But if thou want to enter heaven eternal, you get eternal life, keep the laws and the commandment of Moses. He didn't say, wait, I'm going to die, you know. But he said, if you want to enter life, keep the law and the commandment of Moses. And then we read again the Matthew 5, 7, 5, 7, 5, 17. He said, do not think, Jesus is speaking, do not think that I've come to destroy the law of Moses and the prophet. No. I have not come to destroy, I have come to fulfill. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but a single door from the law of Moses shall not pass till all is fulfilled. And whosoever do the law of Moses and teach someone to do it shall become great. But whosoever cancel a single law, law of a single law, cancel, shall become least. In other words, Jesus Christ did not come with any new law. He followed the law and the commandment of Moses. And so, the Isaiah, which Jeremiah, all of them, he believed them and he followed them. And Jesus Christ followed the law of Moses. He didn't come with a new law at all. So what happened is that in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 20, God was speaking to Ezekiel. He said, all, all soul are mine. All soul. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. This is justice. The soul that sinned, it shall die. The father shall not bear the iniquity of the son, nor the son bear the iniquity of the father. The wickedness of the wickedness shall be upon him, and the righteousness shall be upon him. But if the wicked turn around and do that which is good, I, God Almighty, I will blot his son. I will never remember it. So what God wants from me and you is to follow the commandment that is given. Not for somebody dying for you. Because there is not a single... It, it, is, it is said about him, but he himself didn't actually say, okay, I'm going to die for you. He said, well, keep the law of the commandments. The law and the commandment. And he said, just so many things. So whatever Jesus did, we believe. He walked on water, we believe. He quickened the dead, we believe. But all this thing as a behest of God. There's not a single verse or chapter or by inferring where Jesus said, I did it. No, never. John 5.30, I can of my own self do nothing. The way I hear, I judge. And my judgment is good because I do not take my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me because I, by the power of God, cast out the heaven. Look, he's a human being, just like you and I, but to highest elevation, among the best, closer to God Almighty. We believe that. So Jesus Christ is us. We name our children Isa to commemorate Jesus Christ. We name our wife and our daughters Mary to commemorate Mary. In the Quran, we have the chapter dedicated to Mary, the mother of Jesus. We have a chapter dedicated to the family of Jesus, Sotul Ali Imran. We have a chapter dedicated to Jesus Christ and the disciple, Sotul Ma'ida, Quran chapter 4. So all this, we glorify Jesus, but we don't worship him as a son. And we don't believe he's the son of God preeminently because God does not beget. And if you say God have a son, again, meaning Jesus, in the book of Exodus chapter 2, verse 22, he said, Israel is my son. God speaking. Israel, who's Israel? Jacob. Israel is my son. Even my firstborn emphasis. So clearly, Israel is the firstborn of God, according to the Bible. So we read in the book of Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 13, Israel is my son, and Ephraim is my firstborn. We read in the second, uh, second chronicle, chapter 21. He will build a house for me, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. Who? Solomon. In the book of Luke, chapter 3, Adam is my son. Again, in the Psalms of David, chapter 2, verse 5, David said, and I will declare the glory. And the Lord have said unto me, David, thou art my son, thou art my begotten son. So David is also begotten son. But the word begotten is eschewed in Islam. 
Because if you look at the dictionary, I mean, you, you speak English, you are an English person, look at the word begotten. The Miriam Collegiate Dictionary and the Webster Dictionary, they say, begotten belongs to the lowest animal function of sex, which in Islam we eschew. How did Abraham begot Isaac? With his wife. So how did God beget? No, we don't use that word. God is so sanctified in Islam that we are very careful of the word that we use. So in Islam, you would love and believe in Jesus more than what the Christian theologians are telling us. With all due respect, Islam is so clean, it's so pure. I don't want to go to hell. I want to do what Abraham did because Christian, Jew, and Muslim will follow Abraham. We all said that through, you know, his children. So how did Abraham worship? We say we follow Abraham. You follow Abraham? Of course. Jesus Christ, the son of Abraham, the son of David. We follow them all. But how did God make his uh, messengers and prophets worship? That's why we came here, to worship God Almighty, to do his bid. So Abraham in the book of Genesis 17, verse 3, and Abraham fell on his face. We pray, and the Lord spoke unto him. In the book of Exodus, chapter 40, verse 31, and Moses and Aaron, and the son of Aaron, Eliza, put water at the entrance of the tabernacle, and they washed their hands and their feet before entering in the temple, and they fall with their face to the ground and worship the Lord. And on and on and on. Even Jesus. He worshipped. Who did he worship? Can God worship God? No. In the book of Matthew 26, 39, and Jesus went a little further and he fell on his face and he prayed, prayed, and he said, Oh my father, in the book of Mark chapter 14, verse 35, and he said, Abba, Abba, I know that all things are possible with thee. And he went and fell with his face to the ground and worshiped the Lord. In the book of Luke 22, 39, being in an agony, he even went a little further and fell with his face to the ground and worshiped the God. And he was crying. So Jesus cannot be a God. God is omnipotent, omniscient, the creator of the heaven and earth, the sea, the ocean, the galaxies, everything. God does not perish. He's not subjected into the weakness of man, such as death, hungry, going to the toilet, eating, being born. Imagine God coming from a woman. Subhanallah. You believe? Imagine God Almighty, the creator, came from a woman. I don't want to mention that. Do you believe that? And then he was nurtured. So in Islam, we are very careful to follow the law and the commandments. And that is what the Bible said will get you into heaven. That's what the Bible, I didn't say that. Moses, Isaiah, Jesus, all of them said the same thing. None of them changed everything except what happened later when Paul came into the picture. With all due respect, Paul have never seen Jesus Christ with his eyes. Never. He only imagined a vision that he saw on his way to Damascus. That's what he said. He saw him. So. We follow what Jesus said. You get a red, red letter Bible, you open, it's only 11 pages, the red letter Bible, what Jesus said. So from Matthew to, 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 to Revelation, Jesus didn't say that. People are writing their books. If there is more time, I will prove clearly without a single share of doubt that Matthew didn't write the book of Matthew. Luke didn't write that. John didn't write his book. None of them, they didn't write the book. The evidence is inside. But you are into it. You don't know. Now we have to analyze it. And clearly you could see that he doesn't write the book. But before I give you the speaker to ask a question, let me say one thing about the book of Matthew. Who wrote the Matthew? He said, according to Matthew. It's a weak argument. According to it. should be by Matthew. According to it's a weak argument. Who put it there? Well, according to him. There's no surety. No. If Matthew wrote the book of Matthew, read the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 9. That's an example. Matthew 9.9, 9. let me read it from my head, what it said. It says, while he, Jesus Christ, was going out on the way. Listen to the English. You taught me English. This is your language, and I'm using it here. It says, while he, Jesus Christ, was going out on the way, he saw a man sitting on the task collector's table, and he said, follow me, and Matthew rose and followed him. Did Matthew wrote this. If, Jesus, if Matthew wrote the book, that be, while Christ was going out on the way, he saw me sitting down, he said, follow me, and I rose and followed him. This, that means somebody's writing the books. Somebody's writing about what happened between Matthew and Jesus. But conveniently, according to Matthew, Luke was not even a disciple of Jesus. Luke had never seen Jesus Christ at all in his life. 
and he didn't claim to have had the Holy Ghost to inspire him to write the book of Luke. So in the book of Luke, he said, while many are writing all these books, it seems good to me also to write you an orderly account, most excellent Theophilus. According to him, he said, people are writing about what happened to the Christ. I think it's good for me to write because I'm more smart. I'm, you know. So he didn't claim Holy Ghost. And Mark was not a disciple of Jesus. According to Josephus, when Mark, Jesus was walking in Jerusalem, Mark was less than four years old. Mark was not in the four the 12 disciples selected. It's not, his name is not there. Luke's name is not there. We don't know which John, because if you read the book of John, there are just so many things to believe that John didn't write it. All these things are important information that we need to decipher. A lack of time. 